Hey, and welcome back. Today we're going to see how the movie of Unknown Origin stacks up against the novel, The Visitor. I'm Joe LaScola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm C.B. Smith. And we're about to go book to the movie! We're back, gentlemen. CB is back in the video dungeon, finally, for, finally. A, brand, for a brand new book to move. We've been talking about this one for a while. Mm-hmm. We're going to settle a lot of unknown <laughs> questions, especially the big, the big, uh, the, the giant, let's address the uh, giant rat in the room, uh, I guess. Right, or the kind of a big rat. Uh, Tony from Hack the Movies is yes. watching with the, he's got the popcorn ready, he's watching. <laughs> but, uh, yes, we're, we're finally oh, going to put it to rest on this episode if it's a giant rat. Or just kind of a big rat. So strap in. We're gonna drag this rat all through the video. I'm not gonna answer <laughs> it until until when the book revealed it to me because it took a while. <laughs> oh, okay, it took a oh, while. Good. That's, that, that, well, our uh, our uh, watch time will go up then. <laughs> <laughs> We're people to be skimming this song, bitch. <laughs> I was gonna be a lot of comments. Be like, it's here. It's right here. It's at this, this timestamp. Don't you dare put that timestamp in that. <laughs> Well, at least then we know they're watching. Yes, this is also true. true. That is true. Let's uh, get into this, guys. Of Unknown Origin, I believe that was season two or uh, it was three. Two or, it was actually three, it I was believe. Three. I, I did go back and listen to part yeah. of it. I didn't go through the whole episode. It's a long one. Uh, it had all of us on there. Well, not CB, but uh, Connor was there for the ride on that yeah. one. And Tony joined us and for Tony, that episode. Yeah. Damn, man. Hence was, why I brought him up. That was almost four years ago now. Crazy. That's so crazy. And, and this, booked in the movie, we've been talking about since we did like the Unbound episode. So like yeah. way back. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh and then just the last couple of times we tried to schedule something. So someone ended up not being available and then yeah. we rescheduled like three fucking times. <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> I'm to sorry. talk about a fucking rat and Peter Weller, but the book version. I'm so excited because you know I love this movie. I love of an origin. Yes, we know. And you haven't seen the movie? I have not seen the okay. movie. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about book to the movie, because mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a lot of questions for you guys. You have a lot of questions for me. And we're just going to, you know, dissect it together. Oh, yeah. And if you're new to the show, because we haven't put one of these out in a while, if you're new to the show, uh, book to the movie, that is, Sean and I have seen the film. We usually probably already have done an episode on it. Um, yeah. And then CB reads the novelization or the adaption thereof. Um, and then we compare the two and see how they stack up against each other. Mm-hmm. We've got a whole playlist here, podcast, if you will. You can go down the line. We've oh, got yeah. a bunch of them. For you to check out now. We got Valentine. We got uh, Razorback. We, Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario yep. Brothers. Uh, Child's Play 3 is a double. Well, mm-hmm. that's technically not a book to the movie. It's not we a have book had, to the movie. We have had episodes, yeah. uh, like one that may be coming out or may already be out. I'm not sure on the timeline also on this. Also true. Uh, but we've done episodes like Orca, Child's Play 3, where, where CB comes on and does kind of a hybrid. It's it's a mainline episode, but we yes. get the book flavor in there, too. Did you say Bad Moon, too? Uh, Bad Moon is Bad one Moon. of those Bad also. Moon is one of those as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but another book to the movie was John Carpenter's Vampires, of course. Yep. Oh, that was a fun one. Yeah. Dolphin yeah. diving all over the place <laughs> in that one. Also, happy five years. It was fi- it's was it been wow. five years since the other day, a few days ago, mm-hmm. that you joined us for the first time on Movie Dumpster on the Child's Play oh, 3 wow. episode. It's our anniversary. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was when you first got into the National Guard. We're like, who do we know that's in the National Guard? <laughs> C.B. Smith? Oh, you're in the Army, right? All right, well, this is an Army movie. <laughs> yeah, tell us about this fucking school boot camp thing. <laughs> Uh, we didn't have any uh, child killing dolls, unfortunately. No. That would have been more. That would have been more fun. There you go. What happened to CB? Well, he went to boot camp and a fucking killer doll <laughs> took him out. Oh well. Ah. So here we go. The premise of this, well, at least the movie. We're, you're going to tell us about the book in a second. Mm-hmm. But before we get into this, the premise of the movie is that Peter Weller, um, Robocop himself, Robocop himself, lives in this apartment in New York and uh, basically has this infestation of this rat who comes in and kind of destroys his house, and he kind of has to battle against that, uh, both mentally and physically, because it's starting to deteriorate his marriage and his work ethic and all this kind of stuff. (laughs) His mental state. His mental state. So, yeah, so it's Peter Weller versus giant rat, question mark? We're going to see. And in preparation of, I didn't just read the book, I am also getting very interested in the subject matter, and lo and behold, the rat god smiled upon me, and in my thrift store finds, I found a story, or I'm sorry, nonfiction book, literally titled Rats, by Robert Sullivan, which is just about the history of New York City and its relationship with rats. So, we're going to get some rat facts in between talking about the book. Smith, do you know a rat can chew through concrete? They can. 
Do you know a rat can tread water for five days? <laughs> Did you know rats love pizza? <laughs> Do you know rats don't die from grand your grandmother's traps? Did you know Robo wants an Oreo? <laughs> I want it now. <laughs> he denies he, that ever happened, by he, the way. Yeah, Robo Doc, go in check Robo it Doc, out. Yeah, uh, but yes, Peter Weller against a rat. That about sums it up, Joe. You're right. But I think the first thing I want to mention is that did you guys know that the book and then the movie that's based on the book is based on a true story? Really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. The visitor is based on a true story. According- so how big was this fucking thing? Oh man, I'm gonna have bated breath this whole episode. Is, is this like a big fish situation? I think so. Hmm. More like a big rat situation. Well, it's a big rat situation. Yeah, the tall tale. The the mm-hmm. you know the. Uh... So I want to talk a little bit about the author of the visitor, uh, Chauncey G. Parker the third. Oh, he was. Is he a Britishman? No, Englishman? but that's just a posh name if there ever not. was one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he lived a very interesting life. Uh, he was a World War II Marine uh, Marine veteran. Uh, he was a Harvard business grad, worked for two ambassadors for the UN, then was a banker, and then, get this, he was the business manager for the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. Hmm. Huh. So this guy's been around New York quite a bit. Quite yeah. a bit. It's a very a bit. decorated career. Yeah. He likes to thank the rat that inspired him for the story. Uh, he only Imagine if they did that at Ratatouille. We like to thank the mouse. <laughs> he wrote well, the rat. He, he wrote only one other book called In Sheep's Clothing, and I couldn't get a cop, uh, copy of this. But it's something to do with like a corruption inside a Catholic monastery. So this is a man who writes his mm-hmm. experiences. So I can just imagine this guy <laughs> dealing with a rat in his house and just. Instead of doing the sensible thing and calling a exterminator, just destroys his whole place. So he's the real life Peter Weller from yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, Peter Possibly. Weller, Peter Weller does try to get an exterminator. Well, the problem a is couple he, times we'll get we'll get he there. calls we'll that guy from Men in Black and the rest is fucking history. <laughs> <laughs> Gets so, it fucking shoved in his mouth. But you can't use that. What is that? Your fucking grandmother's traps. You can't use your grandmother's traps. Right. So uh, how does the movie start? Uh, the movie begins uh, with uh, Peter Weller doing his thing like he you see him and his wife and his kid um and it kind of outlines who he is what what his job is and they're obviously in upper middle class if not upper class uh family Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's got that brownstone this massive house in the middle of the city beautiful fucking house does it have four floors a fireplace in every room yellow painted kitchen with yellow for mica Maybe not verbatim, but it definitely has that kind of vibe. There's like a big piano in the fucking there's house. De- yeah, there's definitely a fireplace. It's a large brownstone apartment. I don't, know, I don't know if it gets that brownstone, granular. Not, a, not but... an apartment, a brownstone. Yeah. yeah. Is it just a pretty big house? Or is it? It's a, a giant house. It's pretty fucking big. For New York, it's a giant. For New York City, it's mm. a giant house. Oh, I see oh, what yeah. you're doing yeah. there. Yeah, it took, a, it took a second there. Yeah, it did. So the book does start with that. We do get introduced with Bart, the character's name. He's yeah. an assistant vice president of a company or a bank. And the book begins with him alone in his big house. Uh, and he sees what he think is a mouse scurrying along on the floor. And so he like grabs a broom and a, a, a mop handle and like smashes it and tries to push it into underneath uh, some furniture, only to find out that it's a dust ball. Oh. <laughs> He's just gonna you know, push that under the fucking couch and forget about it. Hey, it's a dead fucking mouse. It'll just rot back there. Who cares? Not my problem. The old bait and switch. I'll leave that for the maid. <laughs> <laughs> Make my wife clean up. Oh shit! There's a squished mouse back here. Did you know about this, Peter Weller? Uh, no. We get inklings of the rat because he's like, huh. I went to go pour my bran flakes and there was a hole in it. And he's like, hey, it must be a mouse. Oh, so we yeah. don't get, do we get scenes of like him hearing noises? He, there's little things. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so there's like, he he finds something that's eaten into. There's little little bits of like noises and stuff. You see uh, POV of the rat and there's like close up shots of the rat mm-hmm. and the tail and the hand and shit. Okay, so we yeah. know like there is a rat in the, the very the, early the on. The audience knows. Okay, yeah. okay. So we don't, about 30 pages in is when we actually get like, maybe it's a rat. There's a good chance that it's a rat. He has a broken hose on his washing machine. Yeah. Well, yeah. It the, it bites through the hose, mm-hmm. floods his whole kitchen. Oh, and yeah. And then he tells the guy the build, in the building, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, the guy in scanners who gets his fucking head blown up. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, like, he's like, oh, something bit through it. No, a mouse bit through it. He's like, that wasn't a fucking mouse. I was like, you got a rat problem. 
And then he's like getting suggestions from him how to exterminate this thing. Right. And that's so, where he gets the grandma. These aren't your grandma's traps and which all is that like shit. Which is like this giant fucking it's like, like metal. Bear trap. Yeah, it's like a giant metal bear trap that he puts like cheese in. It's like something out of Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right. It's so, great. Yeah. So the first like, honestly, almost the first hundred pages, we don't we don't ever see the rat. It's very much just like, oh, that hose. Could it have been uh, disintegrated from something else, from use, or was it you know, bitten by a rat? We don't know. So there is like that fun little mystery of like, is it all in his head? We don't know. Mm. Which is interesting because I feel like at least the movie wants you to have that uh, that idea in the back of your head. Like they are showing the rat destroy shit. They are showing him go after it. But there is also that thought like maybe he's imagining it. Eventually, clearly, that's not what's happening. Yeah. But I like that concept. I, I like that concept too. I think it works better for the book because mm-hmm. if you, establishing that the there's a presence in the house that he's not privy to exactly yet, mm-hmm. I think is is more powerful for the film. Yes, you know what I mean. And it works really good because he's it's slowly starting to unravel, and he starts to like lose his fucking mind because this rat is loose in this giant house and he can't seem to lock it down or kill it. I, yeah. I'm curious, what were you thinking going back when you were reading this during those hundred pages? I mean, you may have known it was a rat because we've talked to you about this so many times. Yeah. yeah. But uh, did you, what, what were you thinking? Do you remember like what the hell, where is this going? What is the, what are they hiding from me? Even when we know it's a rat, there is a lot of meandering um, as it slowly escalates throughout <laughs> the book. Um, but I was kind of like kind of surprised being like, huh, like I know because I was, you guys were telling me like, I know obviously like a rat is going to show up at some point, but between like the cover of the, of the book, the ambiguity of the title. And I'm just like, is this like a psychological thing? Is Mm. he like imagining the rat? We don't know. It does get revealed finally when he's in bed by himself and he's hearing like, people barge into his house and as the brave man that he is hides under the covers <laughs> only to find out it's uh it's two security guards show up uh his house alarm went off because a rat chewed through the wire oh. that's a kind of g- a good fake out yeah mm-hmm. and so the uh security guards like rip uh open up uh, a table and they see like all these little rat droppings and the one security guard's like yep they got rats here buddy look at this raisinette yeah <laughs> oh god he, <laughs> he did it. he does squeeze it yep. like he's like oh, he a rat. <laughs> dropping dropping <laughs> dropping he's like like yeah like Harry yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. he's just licking it and shit like the floor <laughs> It's not a raisin. <laughs> you got a rat problem. God buddy. damn! Imagine that guy trying to hunt the fucking rat. He's got the the, the big rifle the he buys floors. from from uh, what's his face. I will hunt that rat for you. No problem, Mister Weller. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not that far from what the guy was saying. So like he says, like, oh yeah, my mom had like a, a rat problem too, and like the traps didn't work. We got a cat, and the cat was eaten by the rat. Oh, that happens, <laughs> I think. Oh, and, in the movie, a cat yeah. does get eaten by the rat. Yeah. That does happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sadly, it's like a stray he picks up off the street. Yeah, he's like, like, I got a rat huh. problem. You <laughs> stray will do. You know, it's funny. It's poor fucking cat. The the rat book here by by Mr. Sullivan uh, interviews a lot of like either exterminators or like people who dealt with rats in between all the history lessons. And he says like, yeah, exterminators would be like, yeah, like every time I say you have a rat problem, they say they just want to get a cat. And then two weeks later, I pick up the dead cat that the rat killed. Uh, these aren't barn cats. I don't think people understand there's a difference between the type of cat. There's just, oh, just this little feline. It'll work. A little tabby. You, you need, need a fucking bobcat to I'm kill saying, that yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a mountain barn. lion. Or yeah. a dog. <laughs> <laughs> or a dog. Well, especially in the fucking visitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Rottweiler. Yeah. So the security guard is saying like all this stuff. And he says like, yeah, in the, in the end of the day, you know, a shotgun did the trick for it. Okay, so, yeah, so, there you go. So you're telling me, what, did she go like full like Ash from Evil Dead 2 and just start blowing fucking holes in the wall for this I rat? think she was going full Granny Bandana. <laughs> oh, God, I jumped out of the wheelchair just about. <laughs> that goddamn rat, I gotta blow his brains out. Sounds about right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so... They're both very promiscuous. I think we even mentioned that. <laughs> I think we did say on the original episode, it's Granny's rat. Yeah, Mama's <laughs> the mama rat from the movie was definitely fucking hitting up Splinter in the in the sewer, dude. Well, you know, when you're Granny Van Damme's fucking pet, yeah. of course you're, you're going to be fucking because you're the fucking pet. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, they were slamming those rat parts. <laughs> The turtles had to turn the music up to eleven. <laughs> God damn, Splinter. Michelangelo's got his headphones on, just like uh, Gage and Munchie, and yeah. uh, of course uh, uh, Jill Sholin in the stepfather. Yeah, he's eating anchovy pizza just to like have, focus on some kind of other pain, so he doesn't have to hear Splinter get his fucking rocks off. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go do my cotter or whatever, my no. ninja training. Splinter's at it again. <laughs> I made the funny. Sorry. So. <laughs> Granny's got him up against the wall as he's saying it, right? 
<laughs> Kawabunga. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, so this character, you guys keep talking about being like, oh, that's a that's a that's a shitty trap right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, does he have a name in the movie? Um, I forget. Uh, it's like Clint or or Flint. Is he it, does have a name. Is it Cleet Washington? Cleet. 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 Okay, Cleet so, Washington. Yeah, Cleet. There's another dude that he go that Peter Weller goes to see at like an in, like an actual exterminator. Okay, right. and that is what's his face from My Bloody Valentine. The big guy with the mustache. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget his name. Hollis? Hollis. Uh, yeah, Hollis. I forget his real name. It, yeah, but... it's Hollis in in the uh, exterminator shop, and he gives him this poison that, like, uh, if the rat eats it or drinks it or whatever, mm-hmm. it gets, like, a really uh, strong thirst, and it'll eat, or it'll drink until it explodes. Yes, that, I believe, is in the book. Okay. Um, but I believe it was the, it was a shopkeep. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. He's so like that sh- does line up. Yeah. He's like a sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, Cleet Washington, in my mind, he's like one of the main reasons why this story goes on the way it does oh, because okay. he uh, is like one thing talking about like all these things about rats being like you know they go after the softest parts of the body like <laughs> your mouth and lips and your ball sack and your butt. And your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are known to do that. I mean, yeah. look it up. Uh, yeah. According to Sullivan's book, uh, it's because when you eat all the smell coming from your mouth that's why they're attracted to that because rats actually don't have that very good of an eyesight oh, okay. this rat though very good eyesight <laughs> we're gonna find out later just like cats and dogs yeah, yeah exactly. well that's like that torture method they used to have they even showed in Game of Thrones they put like a hot pot on their mm-hmm. chest and put the fuck a rat in there and the only way it can get out is to eat through your chest yeah mm. that's been done a few times well in real they life they used to actually do that that's yeah. what they had it in Game of Thrones though yeah so because that book was dealing with American uh, relationship with rats there wasn't a lot um, talk about other places other sure. than other than this is a very appropriate title because the rat in the movie is it a black rat or like kind of a grayish brown rat? Um, it's kind of like just gray. It's okay. like brown and it? blackish. Okay. So, it's it's darker hair. I, color. I defer to Joey. Seen yeah. it more times. I know it's shot in darkness for most of the it's movie. It's not super discernible. Mm-hmm. If I had to, if I had to describe it, it would be like a dark brown. Okay, so like the the brown rats. Came into the U.S. around 1776, uh, so they're about as American as America can be. Oh, there you go. The birth uh, of a nation of rats. Yeah. 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 They drove out the the black rats that came before that. And oh, that sounds, that's very, yeah. That's and apropos. no one really knows where these rats came from. Uh, America would call them English rats. England would call them Finland rats. Finland would call them Germany rats. And Germany would call them Russian rats, and then Russian would call them China rats. And then the Chinese are just like, why do you guys blame us for everything? <laughs> Did they go off for the fucking bearing straight from America originally and, and circle back around on the ships when they, they got over? Have. They could have, yeah. And the thing is about the brown rats, like not only do we not know the origin of them exactly, but they are the bigger ones. And they go to be about two pounds, which isn't a lot until someone throws a two pound weight at you. Then you're going to feel uh, that. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, That's a lot, dude. Mm-hmm. No, it is when you think hefty. about a rat. Yeah. yeah. They is, can... kind of, is that kind of big? Yeah. I think that's giant. <laughs> kind of big. Again, giant rat, maybe Splinter. I'm still thinking <laughs> Godzilla, hence the Space Godzilla t-shirt is giant, but I could I could go with Splinter size. That's a giant rat. Two pound <laughs> chihuahua size. Yeah, he's really fucking big, but New York seemed bigger. In relation to how big rats usually get. Yes. Mm. But to do the normality. New, New, New York City rats, though, are like Chris even said, it's an anomaly. They're bigger than normal. Well, those, yeah, well, it's because of those European fuckers that are like this big, right? Yeah. Size of beavers. That, well, they're just fucking each other, I yeah. guess. You know, that's that, what they do. That and like they just have an abundance of food. Like yeah. they, um, they they eat just about everything. Um, they really, concrete, concrete. Uh, one of the exterminators <laughs> talked about like, yeah, I just mix glass with concrete, and that seems to do the trick. It's oh, because like, they're going to eat it, and then they yeah, won't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, the glass will fucking do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot better than that poison. Just drinking water. I don't want that thing bleeding all over my mm-hmm. house now. Now, now, like the whole poison thing. Um, turns out, like y'all remember Joker with the super rat thing. Uh, I don't, but maybe really? I should re- refresh my memory. I do not. Uh, Robert De Niro is like, yeah, we got super rats now. You got to kill them as super cats. Oh, in the oh, Joker oh, movie. Oh, the Joker yeah. movie. The Joaquin movie. Phoenix one. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it turns out that was actually like an actual quoted thing that happened over in Harlem in the 70s during the uh, garbage strike. Hmm. Not long after when the book was published. So 
that's probably why the whole true story angle, like this guy living in New York had a rat problem and they wrote a book about it. Oh. But super rats was a term used in the newspapers because these guys were just gorging on all this garbage and the regular poisons weren't working. So, so they, they were, were like immune to it almost. Like. Yeah, immune to yeah. it and getting a huge food source. Mm-hmm. So that was allowing them to mm-hmm. procreate and grow, right? Oh yeah. my God, that's a I, nightmare. Without And the garbage men are just like, yeah, well, I don't fucking care. We're on strike. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> they don't want to deal with them. No, yeah. well, now it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Now you need to call Mira, Mira Sorvino in. She's going to make a fucking giant bug to kill them. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, right, yeah. And, then, and then they'll turn into, you know. The mantis people. The mantis people that live in the subway. You're talking about Mimic? Mimic. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember the name, yeah. That oh. movie's underrated, by the way. Oh, dude. Especially the it's, director's cut. It's so fucking good. It's really good. I did an episode on it. You guys can check that out. That's Take right. We, page, we we briefly talked about it yeah. on one of our episodes, and you tell you said like mm-hmm. the bugs turned into like a fucking house or something, or shingles on a no, house. No, there's like weird bat creatures oh, that bat are in the creatures, shingles right, of the house, right, right. Okay, and they yeah. eat the baby versions of the cockroach people. Gotcha. Oh my there's a God. whole there's a whole organism. Yeah, there's a whole uh, circle of life there. Yeah, That's yeah. definitely one when we 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 will eventually do an episode. I feel like that is definitely going to be a future book to the movie. Oh, mimic is on the plate, baby. Uh, I love that movie. Solid ass film yeah it's a good it's del toro yeah but back to rats (laughs) fuck those grasshopper people (laughs) we'll get to them we'll get to them eventually so um there's a lot of uh going back and forth between the traps and like the rats not taking the bait right so there's no traps are not being activated doesn't matter what he puts in hamburger meat peanut butter whatever and this is still like is there even a rat in this house we don't know because he keeps hearing like a thud of like a broom falling and it's like is it just falling we don't is know it a ghost is it is it just the pipes like there's movement happening on a shelf that we don't see anything but apparently bart the character uh he sees and so again like he's mm. destroying stuff and we don't actually see if there's a rat it's I guess creepy yeah and i guess because it's moving so fast i guess is the implication yeah until cleat comes in and is like well you're so smart why don't you check the basement He's never checked the basement so far. That happens oh. in the movie. That I ha- think I even complained about it at the time. Well, that happens, but like that's not till the end of the movie. Well, no, because really? no, 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 because it's like in the first half hour because he goes down there and he finds the babies and he kills them. And that's the whole thing. The rat wants fucking revenge. Well, yeah, yeah, at one point, yeah, you're right. Because that's the whole thing. Well, why have you ever gone in the basement? You're it's right. Towards, it's towards the oh, okay. end. Though. Maybe it's a little deeper. Yeah, in. because that's like that's the that's kind of the climax. Okay, fair oh, enough. Oh, okay. Because he, he, yeah, Bart like dumps the babies down the fucking drain. That, that's that's part- bunga, And they all go down there, yeah. yeah. That's what happened in the book about like, you know, 110 pages in. He goes in the basement. He sees a whole litter of little baby rats and he has like a two by four. Oh, and then- man. <laughs> More and, brutal. No, it is brutal because he has an open drain and he picks one up, bonks it on the head, dumps it in, and just keeps doing it. One at a time? Just one at a time. Well, you'd like to hear their screams. Well, that's pretty fucking brutal, man. Yeah. Mom's in the background having a fucking Charlie moment, just well, like <laughs> stuck like. Well, she's living in that fucking dollhouse in the movie. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So, if I had a dollar for every time you guys had me on here to talk about a book and a movie where an animal gets revenge on someone for killing their baby. <laughs> You'd have a few uh, dollars. Oh, orca. Let's not I would forget. Have, I would have two dollars. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a lot, but it feels like a lot because it's weird that it happened twice. Yeah. 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 We have to add them all now to the to the Teenage Mutant Ninja ba- Mutant Baby Club. That's true. Also, if yeah. you count Bad Moon, there's that dog. I mean, nothing bad happens to it, but... Eh. Uh, it's grown. I don't, I don't think that counts. I don't think that counts. Okay. I don't think no. that counts. No. That's not a child. Thor's a good as boys. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't. <laughs> but, That's not uh, the spawn of the creature. No, true. So there's a great quote in the book uh, as uh, as the tension rises up and the rat starts to get revenge on Bart by like you know pooping in everywhere in places. Um, there's a great part where like he's. Bart is very uh, uh, flustered by everything, and he rushes into the bathroom. He doesn't put the light on, and he like gets water in and starts washing his face. And he looks down the sink, and there's just rat droppings floating oh. everywhere. Oh, my God. And your cornflakes. Yeah. Um, it's very different in the movie because the rat physically kind of goes after him. Mm-hmm. It's like in his fucking bed under mm-hmm. the sheets. Mm-hmm. That's why I thought you were going with that other scene because, yeah, yeah, he is in the yeah, bed with him at one point. It comes out of the toilet at him. Yep. Um, it comes out of the ceiling at one mm-hmm. point. It does, that does occur where like, yeah. it's like you, like there's a scene where it scurries up and like under the couch, uh, sheets and everything. And all the while you're like, it's a rat. I don't know how big the rat is because the book didn't tell me how big it is yet. <laughs> not yet. But like, I don't know. Go after it, Bart. Uh, any size rat that is not a pet, uh, it needs to get the fuck out of my <laughs> the, house. There's a, a fancy rat. There's a great description in the book about like what Bart is like. 
And it's actually like, it's either Chauncey Parker the third, uh, inserting himself. Cause like, my God, he just, they really, uh, I dump on all this stuff. He's described as um, just over six feet. He was generally regarded as a handsome man, standing very erect, almost proud. His well-proportioned frame and trim body gave him the look of an athlete, a tennis player perhaps, and made whatever suit that he bought off the rack seem to have been tailor-made. And it will go on and on. Oh, I'm not God. doing the rest. He's like a really... Patrick Bateman type. Yeah, yeah. He's like very... smelling his own farts kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Peter Well is a tall guy. Yeah. Yeah, so. he fits that description very well. I think it's I think it's great. Mm-hmm. So uh, after that little thing with the rat droppings in the sink, we get a line. Um, it is patently clear to Bart that she, the rat, no longer viewed their engagement as merely a struggle for survival. For her, it had escalated into a personal vendetta. Uh, that kind of confirms it. I mean, because in the movie, they uh, they can't just say because the rat doesn't speak, but it's implied, heavily implied, but they don't ever flat out say it, I don't think. R- well, right. And that's kind of the culmination of the movie because, like, the rat has been making his life a living hell. Mm-hmm. He finds the babies, kills them, and now it's a fucking all-out war. Mm. And he's, like, dressed to the nines in, like, a fucking, like... Oh, he goes, like, uh, full Rambo. He's got, like, an umpire uh, thing on. He's mm. got cleats on. He's got a bat that he, like, oh, hammers God. nails into and, like, parts of the trap and his, stuff. His Mick Foley bat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mankind bat. And the rat, like, comes at him and, like, jumps on his back and mm-hmm. shit. Like, you there know, are a couple they moments, fully engage. There yeah. are a couple moments like that where there's, like, several different, like, rat attacks. Yeah. Um... It's at this point where he's like, all right, fine. I'm going to call an exterminator. Like, it's like literally less than halfway through the book. He's like, all right, let me try this. And this is where we get to the point where Bard is just a really, really bad salesman. Like, we're told <laughs> we're told in the book that he's that great. He's, he's super ambitious. He's really good at talking and negotiating. You know, he's the assistant vice president of a company. You'd yeah. think so. But, like, he calls him up. And he's just like begging, like, oh, please, please, please come over here. It's like, I don't do weekends. And like, oh, come on, please. And like the exterminator, you know, power to him. He's like trying to work with him, being like, all right, fine. I'll mail you the contract. I'll come in and do an inspection. It's this amount, this amount, this amount. It's like, yeah, all right. And then immediately Bard's like, for one rat that's so expensive. (laughs) It's like. I mean, if it's tearing apart your house. Yeah, yeah. just bite the bullet. It's funny because that happens way in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, And he like can't get an exterminator. Because of the rat problem. So now I think that's making sense for me, like the super rat thing. Also, when he call, he's he like has such a hard time. He's on the phone. He's he's like, What do you mean? Uh oh, what did, I just had it in my head. He was like, he's like looking through the yellow pages looking for exterminators. Mm-hmm. Not not that he's a, a bad salesman about it, but he's very f- like he's like forceful about it pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, like, he's like, I need you to take care of this fucking rat. He's like, you better get down here. I'll, I'll save my thought until you answer this question, yeah. but does the exterminator eventually come? No. Okay, so in the movie, yeah. he's like, I'll leave the check under the record yeah. player. <laughs> yes. And so the guy comes, and it's no longer there. Because the rat guy. The it? rat literally somehow opened up the top, like the glass or ceramic, whatever whatever it's made out of, and took the fucking check, and the guy leaves like a nasty like message on his machine. Yeah. Like, you fucking asshole! I came all the way out there yeah. my day off! He ate the fucking check. And yeah. you see the check all like eaten up. Yeah. And Peter Rose like... He's like, son of a bitch. Yeah, it's kind of a great moment. Yeah, it's good. Oh, my goodness. Because the uh, rat is, you know, it's like a velociraptor yeah. can open doors in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. So uh, does uh, the wife have a friend that shows up and is, like, wondering, like, what Bart has been doing this whole time? It's his secretary. Uh, they changed his secretary. it then okay. because in the movie, his wife and son are just kind of, like, excised from the film, like, halfway through. They go on vacation or they're something. They're on vacation in Maine in the book. He sends them. He makes sure that they go with mm-hmm. her parents. Um, but he checks in on them a few okay. times. But but he, his secretary, he's straight up having yeah. an affair with. It's not oh, like he a actually is having an affair. Oh, he, no, he's, like, no, he's not. Yeah, he, like, sleeps with her and everything. No, he does not. There is a, there is a scene where, like, Megan uh, is the friend of the wife. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Megan, oh, Megan. No, Megan's the wife. I'm sorry. Uh, the wife's friend. It's I... Shannon Tweed, is it not? Because I... remember Tony kept joking about that when we the, did the episode or the maybe the secretary. One of them is. The wife yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Megan is the is the wife and the friend shows up and is wondering like, hey, Bar, like, what are you doing? You're always disheveled a little bit. You're coming in at weird times during the day. Like, is everything all right? Mm-hmm. And then it comes in and the wife thinks like, are you having an affair with me? And he's like, no, it's a big rat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, yeah, and that's what's kind of like 
mm-hmm. what's going, what the deal is, and yeah. nobody knows what the deal is, and that's what she's assuming. Right? Yeah. Like, that he's having an affair. Because yeah. the secretary comes over in the movie to, to kind of do Oh, yeah. no, we don't have that. Yeah. It really is just Bard being like, looking kind of like not himself and shady and doesn't want to talk about well, it. Well, oh, there is a lot of that happening because he, he goes like a, to a dinner party and he's like being weird, going like he got his own rat book and is like firing off rat facts. That's why we keep joking about the concrete. Yeah. He's just, did you know rat? Oh, no, concrete? I'm Bart. I have my own rat fact yeah. book. <laughs> but th- but it well, does... he goes to the library yeah, and he yeah, like yeah. watches all this shit and he watches like the rats like cannibalize each other and he's like he's like do you know rats are a delicacy in Indonesia or something? Well, they're shit. eating dinner, but then it gets worse because then like you're saying filthy he... rats on fine china. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like he is getting like real dirty, not getting changed, wearing yeah. like his Rambo outfit, mm-hmm. his sweatpants, and he goes into the office at one point and his boss is like, "Don't let anybody see you, or else you're basically fired." Like, get your shit together. We'll just push the meeting. It's not that big of a deal. He's got like a five o'clock shadow. Yeah. He's got these huge bags under his mm-hmm. eyes. He can't concentrate. At one point, the rat fucking like eats all of his like work and like fucks oh, it up, yeah. like eats his homework, kind of like revenge. Yeah, all power to to Megan because she is just the most supportive person in this entire story, and the one that makes them like she's the only logical person here because at some point on during one of these phone calls. He's like getting really belligerent and be like, this is war. This is the rat's war and mine. <laughs> and Megan, sweet Megan, is just like, that doesn't make any sense he's, at all. He's very uh, adamant about not telling anybody what's wrong mm-hmm. with him. He's just like, I got a problem at home. He's not like, oh, I'm trying to kill this giant fucking rat. Yeah. I wonder, though, if that is like on some level, like a sign in the times. Like, I'm too proud to admit that I'm dealing with this problem that I can't solve. Well. I mean, be. it makes interesting drama. Yeah. I'm just wondering. I mean, I I had moments where like um, I would have like a project I needed to do, or like I had a problem, and I'm just like, no, I got to do it. Like you're so hyper focused on yeah. it. Um, mm-hmm. I remember one True. time when I was squatting at a house for about six months trying to fix it up, and there was a leak on the main water line, and I was just like, I really could have just not done it that day, but I was working on the house already for like eight or ten hours at the time. It's 10 p.m. And long story short, I'm down in the crawl space, hacksawing a, a, a water pipe that isn't closed off, so I'm flooding myself. Was there a fucking rat down there with you? No, it was just my leak. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and like, th- there's exposed wiring, so I could either drown and or electrocute myself. <laughs> Next thing I know, I got an old plug that I'm hammering away at this live pipe. So you get manic is the point in these situations. Yeah. You dealt with it, yeah. I, yeah, I can see yeah. myself in Bart's situation. Yeah. I mean, tailor suits, like, suits don't fit me. Like, they're tailored, but, you know, easy come, easy go, whatever. I, I've never taken it that far, but the 80s, ADHD definitely takes over where it's like, I'm going to do this one task, and now I've done the dishes, the laundry, uh, I've walked the dog, I've vacuumed, and the task still isn't Except done. Except that one. <laughs> it's like a procrastination thing, yeah. too. I don't know why, yeah. but. My my poor wife. Oh, yeah, I got married, guys. Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my poor wife is always has to deal with that ADHD brain where it's just like, I told you to do one thing. <laughs> Just one thing. <laughs> you, did, you did all those other things. I was like, yeah, but like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we could all relate to yes. Peter Weller. You guys at home could probably relate on some level. Even if it sounds crazy, you're mm-hmm. basically losing your fucking job over this. I think he even tells in the movie. I don't know if he does this in the book, but he's like, tells his boss, like, I got to take care of some shit. And then I'll be back. Yeah. There is that, like, he's literally, in the beginning of the book, points out that, like, oh, yeah, you're on your way for a promotion as long as you keep your head on straight. They do that in the movie Uh, also. And it's like, oh, I see where this is going. (laughs) Setting up those breadcrumbs for later to be gnawed on. I didn't really think, because the way that that it's portrayed in the movie, but it seems to be more like in the book, where Mm -hmm. it's like a uh, metaphor for something like that, you know, like what we were just talking about. I remember uh, Mental issues or trying to overcome the the obstacles of something that... That might be simpler if we just faced it head on versus doing other things to kind of avoid it. Maybe that is easier to explore in a book where you're just yeah. reading the internal monologue or the situation rather than when you're watching the movie. Not that that can't translate, sure. but they just went a different direction. Oh, yeah. It. They went full like monster movie. I mean, in, in a historical sense, it kind of makes sense because the 80s was very much um, – you uh, push forward this idea of like this individualist uh, ideas of just like you'll go 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 gotta mm-hmm. you know go grind go kind persevere of no yeah. matter what you gotta yeah. go and grind yeah you gotta get that grind man but then like you know you burn out you get focused on rats or you drown yourself <laughs> in a crawl space you know yeah, right. holy shit man I wonder what my fate's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's going to be cockroaches. Oh, no. Please, no. God. Oh, no. God, wait. No. Take no. it out. God, wait. <laughs> no, no. I take it out show. of the universe. You're going to be surrounded. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I'm going to be up in fucking Pratt. No, no. I had a, I had a bed bug scare like 10 years ago. My oh. goodness. And same thing. I did it all myself because I couldn't afford an exterminator. And I'm just like wasting all time and money washing all the clothes, oh, doing all God. these bug bombs until finally an exterminator did finally come. I gave up. And he just kind of – I cleaned up the bed, everything on the bed because – bed bugs and then this this guy just takes out a framed poster of Jimi hendrix and he's looking in the back and he's like yeah there they are right there <laughs> they i was like the poster i was like jimmy you betrayed me so wait they weren't in your bed they, they, were, they were moving to it but probably. turns out bed bugs are just like a name they go just about anywhere oh gotcha, gotcha. that's about hard to get rid of ah I hope watch the- a lot of hotel shows they talk oh. about it a lot I hope those watching are now like kind of like yeah, itching I'm, I'm itchy like, already. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's let's dial back to yeah. something more pleasant, like a rat, <laughs> a so kind the, of a big rat, and it's only just one you mm-hmm. got to get rid of, right? Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. So there's a lot of incidences that happen where like the rat doesn't eat a check, but like the rat would eat and pee in like this this old chair that his grandfather gave him. Oh, that's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck you, Peter Willard's grandpa. <laughs> uh, there was a point where like the rat. Like ate and peed on his bed, mm. and that was like a big thing because like at this point he's not eating, he's drinking like heavily alcohol. So there's no like food in his stomach. He's oh, like, he's yeah. he's got the fucking yeah. JB. He's yep. hit, he's hitting yep. a dude sleeping in the mm-hmm. bathtub. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then this guy Phil shows up. He's a real estate agent. He's like, I want to buy this house if you clean it up nicely. What? He sees like the wreck going on and he's yeah. like, huh, an opportunity, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he yeah. So like now he's like. He's offering fifty grand more than the house is actually worth. So wow. it's like, all right, so now he's got to clean up the house, but no, he's got a rat problem here. So he's um, actually considering this guy's offer? He's considering, but doesn't <laughs> do it. But the one that like tipped him over to be like, fine, I'm gonna sell the house was when the rat ate his fig newtons. Oh. That's like a big thing. <laughs> what is he obsessed book. with them? No, no. It really was just like, oh, I just want some fig newtons. And he goes in and like there's a big hole. The rat like ate everything. Shit Not- pissed on his grandfather's chair. <laughs> But he's mad about Fig Newton. Well, that's the that's all he had, Joe. That was the last thing where the Fig Newton's the last thing he had. He was really like, looking forward to that. There is a scene in the movie where he goes into like his his pantry and the food's just all eaten, and he yeah. does flip out. So maybe it's supposed to be similar to that. Yeah. There was a moment earlier where he's like, "Man, I should go do like I just want an English muffin right now." And he goes into the bread box, completely empty. And oh. He's like, "He <laughs> ate my English muffins." That would be a good English muffin commercial. Uh, yeah, yeah right? fucking rat is chewing on those nooks and crannies, dude. Uh, Fig Newtons, rats love. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching Talladega Nights this morning, and the Fig Newton stickers on the windshield, and Will Fowler was like, "Boy, this is dangerous." But I sure love Fig Newtons. <laughs> He's got the rat in there chewing on him. With oh him. yeah, maybe just chilling, just chilling. If it ain't first or last. <laughs> now, now does uh, in the movie does Bart look at a, a psychiatrist? Does he actually like talk to one? No, no. Okay, no. so the his job actually has a psychologist like on on the clock, like hmm. a company company doctor. And this is great because it's just like this very long moment of him just like breaking down, being like, yeah, so I got this problem. I got a rat. I got dealing with this and that and that. And then the doctor's just like, hmm, would you say this rat is aggressive? What year was this fucking book written? Uh, 79, 80, something like that. But like it's- Vampire's Kiss is watching. (laughs) There's a, like at one one point it's like, oh, so uh, Bard, this, this rat is a female. Uh, how was your mother? Was she very domineering? And like it turns Weird. into like it like it becomes like a thing where like the the doctor thinks the rat's a manifestation. It's a Freudian rat. Oh my god, that's so fucking weird. I mean, we do get a little bit of that, not a, a psychological breakdown, but it's like, well, if you got a male, it's not so bad. But if you got a female, they're twice as vicious, mm. and they'll fuck you up, yeah, especially I, if it's got babies or whatever. Yeah, I, I think that like psychiatrist thing was a thing though. Just to comment on that again, real briefly, I'm saying vampires kiss. That was in there, mm-hmm. uh, but I want I mentioned. Gordon Gecko earlier, but it's been forever since I've seen Wall Street, but I feel like that actually was a thing in that movie. Uh, so maybe that was like a trend at the time. Interesting regardless. And it's kind of funny to hear that in the book. I mean, I re- I'm doing research for a Dungeons & Dragons episode and there's a satanic panic angle that I really just fell way too hard into that rabbit hole and part of that is looking to psychology at the time. And in the 70s and 80s, there was a big changeover and we were talking a lot about uh, deep-seated repressed memories and mm-hmm. And so the idea of the psychologist being like, huh, so this rat and your mother, is your wife also domineering? Are you the wearing the pants in the house? Do you feel emasculated by this female rat you say you have? Right, giving him the missing puzzle pieces he thinks he needs. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Um, and at the end, this is my favorite part of the book. 
the doctor pulls out a literal gallon dr- uh, uh, jug full of drugs. And it's described that he has a ladle. And he just puts it into the jug, pulls it out, and puts it into a cup. And he's like, take this. What is he making? Fucking moonshine? Uh, yeah, no, LSD. It's, what no, is it's this? like these little yellow pills. He's just like, here you go. Like no prescription, no nothing. He just pulls out. It's described as a gallon jug. So like a a carton of milk, basically yeah. a gallon jug and a la- a ladle, like an actual ladle. What, is he making ecstasy in his fucking bathtub? He's making MD oots, man. No, this is like oh, something out of go. body melt. Okay, you eat oh, these God. fucking things, your dick falls off, your face <laughs> melts. <laughs> Like, I just couldn't get it out of my head that, like, this doctor just has a random jug of drugs just chilling on his desk and just, I mean, yeah. What is it, though? They're not like, M&Ms. I don't know. Yeah. Like, here, here we go. He's a cup full. So does that imply everything that happens after that point in the book is some fucking acid trip this guy goes Drug-induced, on? Drug-induced uh Well, I hope not, dream? because pretty soon we're going to finally know the size of the rat. Oh, my I God. Oh, my God. Here we go. I've imagined it. This is so, the part we've been waiting for, folks. This is the climax, right? Here we had we a go. Couple, we had a couple rat attacks. Things got destroyed, whatever. Bark got really messed up. A rat trap, like, best of his fingers at one point. Mm. So, like, it all got built up to this. He's wearing his hunting gear. Okay. He's got his bat. Okay. He's going in the basement. Here we go. And is the rat jumps down on top of him from the rafters, where it's described as corpulent. <laughs> rather corpulent? Rather corpulent? <laughs> we should corpulent? Very corpulent? Not yeah, very nah, corpulent. Nah, nah, just nah, rather nah, corpulent. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, Mario Brothers, It's my favorite line of that fucking movie. Uh, why I think go right to that movie every time I hear that fucking word, it's impossible <laughs> not to. But yeah, I guess it is corpulent. I, I said it's like Yorkie size. Uh, uh, it g- does get on his fucking back. You could see it. It's it just, uh, corpulent means large. No, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... That's so it. she was corpulent. Yeah, yes, she, she was just corpulent. Okay. okay, so it was a large rat. It was just that, a, that's it was the just, extent of it, though. I mean, it was a pretty big rat, Joe. <laughs> Fuck. So cor- it's a corpulent <laughs> so, rat. So wait a second. So it's still not perfectly settled, though. It's, it's just, just corpulent. It's just corpulent. That's the only word in this book that describes the size of the rat. <laughs> Throughout the entire book, it is the rat does this, the rat is doing that, and I'm reading it, being like, "How big is this fucking rat?" And they'll finally describe like ten pages left is like its corpulent body lands on his shoulders. Like, okay, we have something, we have something. Okay, I guess if it's like on his back, on his shoulders, much like the film, so it's got to be, I, I guess, like Yorkie size. It's big. It's like this it's, it fucking is big. big. It That's ain't giant, giant, right? So how how okay. Okay, I, I how would... big are the rats in the in your okay, in the rat book? That, then you at least give a better idea. Sorry. Again, we, we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta give a better answer than corpulent. <laughs> the, the rats in New York City are corpulent. They like pizza, like yeah, I yeah. said. <laughs> twenty inches. So max size is twenty inches. Tail to so nose. Inches, about yeah. that. So it's as big as like that Michael Myers. Oh, that's smaller than the movie then. It's not. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the one in the movie is like this fucking big. Oh, you're saying the real life ones? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Lost my so, train of thought. So the so the New York rats are only about this big. Yeah. And then the one in the movie is like this motherfucking big, and it's corpulent, very corpulent. It's, re- it's, it's cor- big. It's regular corpulent. Yeah. It's it's about the thickness of a fucking birthday cake. <laughs> I would say that's what it jumps out of in that dream. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a dream. Yeah. yeah. Are there any dreams in the book? Do you have any dreams? Um, yes, I don't. There's like two or three in the movie to kind of like throw you off. He's just like having a dream about like his son having a birthday and the rat like pops out of the fucking cake. Oh, yeah. That's his, awesome. his son also like in the beginning of the movie like makes cereal out of like just shit on the counter, like sugar and garbage and whatever. Yeah. And then later he has a dream where his son's doing that, but he's putting like rat poison in his fucking bowl. And he's like, no, stop. It's taking over his life. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not finding anything about a dream. I believe he does have like some kind of small minor dreams of just like being either chasing the rat or being chased by a rat. Okay. Not not like the movie then. But... Nothing of, of importance or, or, or uh, of notice, but um, <laughs> so the, book, the book answers no Corpulent. no questions none none so the verdict is still out i'm still calling it a fucking giant you're, rat you're allowed <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna compromise and per- paraphrase uh, princess brian think it was just it's a rodent of unusual size okay I-, I could go with that we've had a bunch of those on the show lately again trilogy of terror that had some big fucking rats. those were giant rats those were giant rats from grave diggers yeah graveyard uh, rats. I, graveyard rats not grave that was a different thing that's a different thing altogether that's a that's a short that's a film that I made in high cut. school. Yes, that is for a, a reference for nobody. Maybe stay tuned for Patreon. Yeah, we'll show it. Maybe. 
What happens at the end of the movie? Oh, he kills the rat. He oh, hits it with the fucking bat. He fucking okay. beats the living <laughs> daylights out of this thing. It's like kind of th- the model house is the the model of his house he's in that, it, yeah. like Joe said, it, it like lives in. He like destroys that. He fucking smashes this thing dome. Oh, that's his daughter's house. Something. She had a thing for like she was oh, okay. daughter's yeah, dollhouse. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, it was a daughter in the book. Yeah, yeah. he just has a son in the, oh, in the oh, movie. Oh, okay. Well, it was a son's yeah. dollhouse. Minor uh-huh. change. I, I, Unless she's not? grown up and moved out, I don't know. At the very end, like what 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 do we get at the very end? Does he kill uh, the rat? Kills the rat. Yeah, he kills, kills the, rat. the rat. He obliterates the rat. Okay. Um, and then his wife comes home, and she's just like, what the fuck happened here? And he's like, er, I think er, we should take a vacation. Or he says something like that. Uh, yeah. I'm remodeling. We yeah, we're remodeling. We're remodeling. House. And it's like, ugh. And then it like, does like one of those classic like 80s zoom outs, like I'm from a helicopter. <laughs> freeze frame. <laughs> so uh, the book ends with the wife... The psychologist slash drug pin, apparently, doctor. Oh, yeah. Um, Here's some more, guys. Here's and, a ladle full. And the real estate agent. They all come together at the very end being like, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, we're here to see Bart. Oh, yeah. So they go in and they go down the basement and it's described that, like, uh, the rat's dead, just chilling there in the corner, dead as a doornail, and Bart is there with blood Either the rats are his on the face and everywhere, slack jaw just staring off, being like, and then it, it jump cuts to like some time later. Bart's out of the hospital, he's a little bit better. They move to a new place, and then Megan's like, Honey, what's this? and he brings out rat pellets. Dun 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 in the new house, in the new house. Oh no, were they, <laughs> were they big? Were they as big as the other ones? They don't describe the oh, size. That's like a classic. I imagine they're corpulent. Oh, <laughs> man. I kind of wish that was the ending of the movie. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, they fucking move and there's another rat. <laughs> this is like poltergeist. Um, well, yeah, they did, they moved the graves, but they didn't move the bodies, yeah. the rat droppings. They didn't move them. It's a new house, but they followed us because it turns out that uh, Carol Ann is uh, the rat a magnet to- <laughs> yeah. She's got the flute. <laughs> the Pied Piper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's how the book ends. Is uh, surprise sequel bait. I uh, kind of love it, <laughs> and no sequel was ever made. No, right. no, 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 and neither to the movie either. No, no. I think it's a good one and done. I think so too. Um, reading it, there was like because I knew what was happening with like there's gonna be a rat. I wasn't really much more appreciative of like the moments where it's like, huh, is this like a psychological thing the or whatever? Up. Yeah, yeah. And then Ozzy Bart's kind of an asshole. I don't like him. Well, Peter Weller yeah. plays a lot of characters like that. So that mm. lines not that you would know that in the book, but he's in, right. in the in the movie he's stiff. not a, he's not a total dick. Right. Um he yeah, stiff is a good word to he say. He plays it well. It's not yeah. a criticism, but yeah. that is something he does often. So yeah, like a wealthy businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon Gecko. Yeah. There you go. I don't think I'm definitely not gonna read it again. I did enjoy the moments in there. Obviously the corpulent line took a chuckle out of me. Uh, the gallon of drugs was like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, that's it, crazy. That's like, what are you talking about? That's such a weird character, too. So like, it, 80s, guys. It, it, definitely, it definitely reminds me of some of the the uh, lower tier paperback 70s and 80s books I've read before. Very much like an airplane read. Mm. Um, the movie, though, like Peter Well is always a good actor. So like, I don't know. I'm interested in watching it at least once. I think it's great. I think you're going to like it. I think it's a hundred percent worth seeing at least once. Yeah. I've watched it a few times. I, I think it's like a three out of five. I don't love it. I definitely don't dislike it as much as maybe I have in the past. Uh, the last viewing was like, oh, it's a little better than I remember. It's solid. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, I, I, I like watching. Uh, I love Peter Weller mm-hmm. first of all. Yeah, and I love how he kind of becomes uh, unwound by this uh, visitor. Or if you unbound. Will. Unbound. He does become unbound, especially once that piano gets taken out. Oh, That's like shit. the real tipping point yeah, in the it's movie. Great. Yeah. That's also the check scene. When he's fucking getting drunk and screaming around the house and then suiting up to go fight this fucking rat, it's great. Um, I, I don't know. I really like it. I've always liked it. I don't think I'm going to watch it with my cats, though, because cat, <laughs> like you tell me there's cat murder in there, and I'm like, cat murder is my least favorite kind of murder. No, same. It's, it's very... For having it in there, yeah. it's kind of like he just finds the cat like on the ground, and you might see a little blood. It's like, oh, that's a shame that happened, but it's not over the top. Like I no, watched, I watched like that mutilated. Willow remake when I was a kid, and it, it, it completely scarred me permanently because oh. like that that poor kitty just like trying to get away from all the rats and then falls into the sea of rats. <laughs> and so that that burns into my brain when I was a kid. And I was like, I can't watch this movie. What movie is that from? The, the Willow, Willow remake from like two thousand two. Oh, Crispin Glover. Guy, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Willard. Yeah. Oh, Willard. Willard. Yeah. We were I'm both like, saying Willow. 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 I'm like, 
Warwick Davis? Yeah, imagine like, that was in the remake. No, Willard. Warwick yeah, holds yeah. up a wand. He's like, yeah. I'm yeah. saving this series. Here come the rats. <laughs> <laughs> the rats come out and eat everybody. Mm. They would have saved the show. Could have gotten a second yeah, season. I would, I would watch you it You watched then. it? You tell I me. I watched two episodes and was like, you know what? I'm good. You needed the rats. I needed the he rats. He needs the kind of big rats to yeah. come in. Once they Luke skywalker Willow, I was like, ah, I'm good. Mm. They got eaten by rats. They yeah. just covered yeah, his body. Yeah. <laughs> like those fire ants on that guy in Indiana Jones 4. But the rats. <laughs> Ooh, fire ants. I got fire ants one time. It was during a military exercise. I had a, a machine gun and I planted down in the middle of the night. And I'm like, huh, what's the what's what's this weird feeling in my huh. arm? Ow, 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 <laughs> fuck. Fire uh, ants, apparently. Oh, dude. And I have these marks. I think I still have some scars uh here and here, I think. Oh my god. So, I lived yeah. in Florida when I was a kid. Ooh. Oh, um, they're there, yeah. In Cape Coral. And I, I stepped on America's I, Australia. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I stepped on a, a, a fire ant hill and they engulfed my leg. Mm. And uh yeah, that wasn't that wasn't fun. I had to soak that leg. So mm-hmm. what I'm learning here is that we need to cover a movie about fire ants. If it, besides them, I know them's a thing. That's, them, those, are, those, are, those are giant ants. Those are those are giant ants. Those are pretty ants. big ants. I think those classify oh, as giant. Oh, they're kind of big. It's kind of a big ant. <laughs> What's a giant ant at that point, yeah. then? Fucking planet size? Well, you're talking about Godzilla. Uh, yeah, well, I am. You're right. I'm just saying, on the fire ant conversation, well, now that we know that it's a corpulent rat, not a giant rat, not a kind of a big rat, corpulent, maybe there'll be some corpulent fire ants we could talk about. They're not fire way. ants, but there's a movie. I can't remember the is name it of it. Empire of the Ants? No, not Empire of the Ants. I mean, that is one, too. Because I was but... going to say, that is based off an H.G. Wells short story, yeah. so I could come back for that. That is also true. There's another movie with ants, and I'm, it's, it's, I'm forgetting the name. Mr. Lobo mentions it on our Apple Gates episode, okay. um, and I can't remember it, with the kid who goes into the dumpster and he's like covered in ants oh. and they kill him. They Sounds about right. Pool. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Sounds like a Lobo movie yeah. to me. Mm. I love killer bug movies. They're great. Yeah. And we all love, I guess, not killer. I guess we all like this. I mean, you still have to watch the movie, but yeah, you right, said it was right. like a good read, but never going to read it again. It was a fun little read, yeah. yeah. You were the first one to read it since I got it, so yeah. I want to read it now and just check it out and oh, see no, if it's Oh, no, I feel bad. I spoiled it. No, no, it's great. Well, I, I already saw the movie. He told you to. All right. I, thank God you prepped me for the corpulent line because I would have been really pissed if I just read it. <laughs> Gotta highlight that in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on! Corpulent. Oh, man. Spiky uh, Niggy. <laughs> Just off in the side, shaking yeah, yeah, the fucking heads. Yeah. I think they're nodding in approval. Be like, yeah, they corpulent. might be, yeah. Koopa Cousins, they know what's up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. And and fine. we're finally, I don't know if we answered the question, but maybe we made more questions. <laughs> we got an answer. We got an answer. Maybe not the answer we wanted. Uh, but, yeah, we just talked about The Visitor and Of Unknown Origin and how they stacked up against each other. But let's tell everybody where they can find your show taking a page and what you're working on. Well, if you guys want uh, more information about movies and books, uh, particularly pertaining to animals, um, you guys showed up on my channel when we did Orca and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, that was Came good on one. your channel. The show is called Taking a Page. Um, channel is called C.B. Smith, my name. Uh, another good animal one I did was the uh, the horror that is the Bambi novel. Oh, I knew you were going there with yeah. that. The second you mentioned animal-themed episodes, it's like, where's Bambi? Get Bambi out here. <laughs> I still just stare off in the, in the wall being like, how did that thing like just uh. if you want to learn about the horrors of the book you need to see uh cb's video on that oh yeah and learn some new fun deer facts too <laughs> yeah you do actually uh stop by subscribe don't subscribe like don't like please like please subscribe um but no we have a good time there yeah so yeah man thank you so much and that was uh the visitor versus of unknown origin uh i'm joel escola i'm sean Rourke. i'm cb smith and we'll catch you on the next book to the movie